And thank you, Scott Shannon, conservative underground conservatism, temporarily in exile, but not forever. Anyway, it's the Sean Hannity Show, 800-941-SEAN is our number. Um, and I had the great pleasure last night. We have tonight on Hannity on the Fox News Channel for the full hour, Governor Sarah Palin. And we talk about everything. And uh, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of telling you this is Governor Palin unplugged in her own words. We talk about growing up in Alaska. We talk about her personal life, the ups and downs. We talk about the economy. We talk about President Obama. We talk about, uh, you know, the world at large, you know, rough spots, terrorism, everything in between. And she is here with us now. Governor, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Sean? Uh, did you, I had a great time last night. With you. It was really fun to just let you be you and uh, i really was and uh you couldn't have been more gracious to everybody on our staff i think you must have signed autographs and taken pictures for an hour afterwards thank you well you have an amazing staff and hard-working crew members there they're the folks who make it all happen i appreciate them well you know it was interesting governor and, and this has rarely happened and i i just want to one thing that you have no idea i'm about to say you came in our studio you walked up to every person every cameraman Every uh, every person that works there and uh, on your own and just said hello to everybody. That doesn't uh, believe it or not. That does not happen very often. Well, I've been there. I've been behind that camera and I've been on that crew. Uh, you know, through those college years, uh, I know what they put up with with some of the talent, and I appreciate these workers. Well, those are other shows, by the way. I'm <laughs> oh, okay, that, yeah. I'm the one. I'm the guy buying pizza and uh, Kentucky Fried <laughs> Chicken every night. Oh yeah, that'd so, win me over too. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, thanks for being here. Now uh, we had a guy call in earlier. You're going to be at a book signing tonight in Grand Rapids. And we had Wood Radio as our affiliate out there. We had a guy call in. He was he slept outside the bookstore starting at 11:30 last night. Oh, wow! Oh my goodness! Bless his heart. Well, I hope that uh, I see him and get to speak with him and shake his hand. Well, listen, uh, I appreciate it. The way I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to ask you the same questions that I asked you last night because I, I think this is interesting. You have gone through a period where people have done their best to attack you, besmirch you, smear you define you and I wanted to I, I wanted to specifically lay out this audience for to let people hear you um, sort of uninterrupted I've, I'm saying using the word unplugged mm -hmm. is that rare for you this is a rare occurrence I guess over the past year but over my entire career I've always been pretty much unplugged and kind of going rogue so this last year into the campaign where I was a bit bottled up was um, a, a new normal for me and I'm glad to get to be back to the way it should be being able to speak freely and candidly and not be hit with ethics violations or lawsuits for taking a position on an issue as I was there at the end of my um, gubernatorial duties. I love this liberty. I love getting to call it like I see it. Yeah. By the way, uh, did you notice that the Oprah audience that you had, that you had the biggest audience that she has had in over two years? Oh, that's that's nice to hear. I'm glad that uh, people were quite curious as to what we'd be discussing, and it was a fun visit. Let me ask you more specifically. We're just talking about this Los Angeles Times piece where there is a, and this is about health care, where just this past Monday, women that get a mammograms, that there is a U.S. preventative service task force. They delivered a, a stark reminder, I think, of how dangerous government health care can be. They recommended that women in their 40s no longer get annual mammograms to screen for breast cancer. Did you hear about that? I heard about that, and that takes you aback. And I bet if you spoke with any of the cancer survivors whose cancer was discovered via a um, mammogram in their early years, they would beg to differ with that. Yeah, well, I mean, when you've made the comment on your Facebook page about, quote, death panels, mm -hmm. it, it literally sparked a huge debate in this country. Are you amazed at, at even the impact of your words on Facebook and they had on that debate? It, it was impacting, and I'm glad that we got to shake it up a little bit and get people to start thinking about what ration care will lead to in our country. And if government takes over and controls one-sixth of our economy, takes over the health care system, essentially, in our country, then 
obviously they're going to have to ration care. There will be bureaucrats. I picture it as a panel of bureaucrats deciding who will receive that care based on somebody's subjective judgment of years left of productive life. And um, that's a that's a cruel and, and evil way of um, uh, allowing Americans to receive the health care coverage that they want. What Americans want are some common sense, free enterprise oriented solutions plugged in, which the GOP has provided the White House. And um, we want to make sure that those are plugged in before we look at government takeover. As you look at the president's first 11 months in office, what are your general thoughts? We're way off course in, in terms of digging this deeper and deeper hole that is creating a very dangerous situation for our country economically. We are in so much debt. We would never run a business or run our family's um, monthly budget the way that the federal government is running its budget right now. It's immoral to have to um, create this debt and, and hand it to our children to pay for our needs and our wants today. And uh, Congress, if, if the White House isn't going to do it, Congress ho holding the purse strings, they'd better rein it in. Well, I don't think it's going to be this con Congress that reins it in, but I, I certainly certainly see a lot of hope, especially in light of the elections in Virginia and New Jersey. Um, what did you think of the results? Oh, indicative of what's to come. There's going to be a huge shift. 2010 is, is going to be an earthquake politically across our country because people are, just as you're suggesting, not putting a lot of hope in this Congress that, that has been too um, complacent with the, the rate of the growth of government and the infringement in our small businesses and in our families of government's arm. And we're saying, no, enough is enough, and we're going to shake things up, and we're going to, we're going to elect people who will get to Washington and will really give this credence or respect to the wisdom of the people. And what the people are saying is we want to get back to those principles that Ronald Reagan had applied to get us out of a recession back in the early 80s, cut taxes on the job creators and get government out of the private sector. You know, one of the things I found a similarity we had, I, I was inspired about politics and events by following Reagan, and you write a lot about that in the book. Uh, and I was also glad to see, because I felt like I was a lone voice out here at times, that you recognize that, in fact, Ronald Reagan inherited a far worse economy than Barack Obama did, but nobody in the media wants to point that out. No, in fact, some in the, on the left, that lamestream media, they're contradicting what I wrote. Did you say lamestream? Yeah, lamestream. <laughs> they are contradicting <laughs> those facts that I laid out regarding what Reagan had to face. Uh, anyway, it's been nonsense to hear some of the criticism of that principle there. And that is that history shows us that what Ronald Reagan did was put America back on the right path. We need to emulate that. We need to repeat that. Instead of going back to the 1930s and think that some growth of government, New Deal spending, is going to get us out of a recession, it's going to cause, of course, greater problems. You know, the president actually today complained that deficits... That, that he caused, by the way, are, are too big. He said it's important to recognize that if we keep adding uh, to the debt, even in the midst of this recovery, at some point people could lose confidence in the U.S. economy. Now, he also warned about a double-dip recession, and I'm thinking these are your policies. You quadrupled the debt. What did you think of those remarks? I think it's encouraging. That's how I'm going to look at this is, okay, I'm, uh, we've got we've to have some hope here that um, his advisors are recognizing, too, oh, whoops, the American people aren't on board with this government overgrowth and infringement in the private sector because we're not, and our voice is, is becoming louder and clearer. Clear, and that's via the Tea Party movements and people showing up at town hall meetings and people getting involved in local elections and their state elections, and they're saying, no, enough is enough. We want to get this economy back on the right track by doing these common sense conservative things that we should have been doing for the last 11 months. Do you really believe that the president has any tendency to moderate this way? Now, I know that Bill Clinton did. I mean, he talked about the era of big government being over, ending welfare as we know it. I, I have not seen any indication that Barack Obama is anything but a pretty hardline ideologue. Except for his comments so recently, though, Sean, and I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say, okay, he's looking at numbers. He's looking at the distrust of Americans and our disgust, too, when, when it comes to some of the policies being implemented that uh, that 
certainly is growing government and infringing on um, free enterprise. Those comments, I'm going to take as an encouragement that uh, somebody around him anyway is seeing the light. Well, it's either that or the election results perhaps shocked them into the reality that they are out of sync with a center-right country. That, but, that... Sean, too, uh, it's easy to talk the talk. Let's see if they're going to walk the walk now. Let's see if this uh, fiscal year 2011 federal budget is going to be reined in or not. Let's see if there are pork projects that um, Congress is going to embrace again and not fulfill its um, earmark reform that they had promised. Let's see if health care reform is crammed down America's throat to the tune of one point some who knows trillion dollars without us knowing what's in the bill. Let's see if cap and tax pass. We will see if if the White House is going to walk the walk or if they're just going to be talking the talk as typical politicians do. I'm betting that it's the latter. I, I'm, my betting is this is all image and perception, and uh, I don't believe that they're going to back away from their agenda. And I think I think you're right. I think a political earthquake will take place in, in next November.